Talking Sex Live is recorded in front of a live audience. This show is for mature listeners only. Hello, you're Talking Sex Live with Chet and Diane. I'm Diane. And I am Chet, and we are back from Tahoe here live streaming on Twitch and also recording for YouTube and also for podcasts. So we are unlicensed sex therapists. We're just a couple who's had a whole lot of sex. We haven't gone to any schooling or any universities or we don't have any type of degrees for sex uh, therapy or relationship or health therapy. We're just a couple who's had a whole lot of sex and we want to share our knowledge with the world. And so we are joined with our producer for today and our guest specialist, Richard Colby, my good friend. How are you doing, Dick? I'm doing good. Yes, I'm doing good. Trying to stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're you're down in hot uh, WeHo right now, right? Yeah, I hear this is where the gay people are, but um, I don't know. I don't see any. There's nobody there. Uh, I don't know. Is... Did they know I was coming? I thought yeah. I was. I thought I made some friends recently, so. So I mean, are, are you dating? Or are you? Do you have uh, any love interest going on right now, there, Dick? Or uh, no, I'm not dating. But I mean, man, you know, I befriended some of the guys when I was staying in the dorms, and you no, know, I don't know, but they, you know, we get along really well. Is I guess the best way I can put mm-hmm. it. But they haven't actually expressed any kind of sexual interest in me. They're just. You're just buds, friends. Just buds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard when you're gay because you're like, I hear that like cats judge everything on whether or not they can eat it, and I think that's <laughs> kind of like the problem because you're meeting all these guys. And you're like, which one of these can I date? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, do you find that uh, when you're friends with another gay man, is there some type of like sexual tension in the room? Like for if a, if a single guy and a single girl are friends and they're heterosexual and they, there's sometimes there's an underlying sexual tension between the two of them that, Hey, you know, at, at any point, could we fall for each other? Could we hook up? Could we make out? Is there anything like that with, with you just meet a guy and you're just not your type, but you want to be friends? Is there some type of sexual underlying tension? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, if someone's attracted to you, th- there's a sexual tension there, but I, I would say that, you know, observing, all the boys in the in the men's side of the dorm you know just do it just doing what they do like there's from my vantage point there seems to be a lot of sexual tension there but i i don't know that just feels like part of the normal culture too yeah mm-hmm. huh well you know we're like gonna... wrestling how you know wrestling <laughs> mm. wrestling so you guys just go see wrestling or do you all wrestle together well, it's it's a kind of a bonding thing, a male dominance bonding thing. Oh. Guys wrestle each other for fun, and there's, you know, the, it, wrestling man. It's great, good stuff like Greco-Roman wrestling, or it's a dorm. We're talking oh. about in the dorm, like got it. Yeah, like uh, you watch wrestling, or actually you're you're starting. No, the guys are wrestling, wrestling each other, like horse, oh, you know, like, like horse, horse play. Wrestling. Yeah, yeah, horse play, but yeah. And so you wrestle each other because that's what guys do. But also, mm. I don't really wrestle with my friends. Wrestling, okay. You never wrestle your friends? Uh, no, not really. I yeah, I don't know. Maybe when I was a kid, I would wrestle with my my friends. Like outside, we'd play uh, you know WWF, which is now WWE. But yeah, it was the thing. Right. Uh, we would all have our favorite wrestlers, uh, Bruce the Barber Beefcake and, and Jake the Snake Roberts and, and Ultimate Warrior, and we would try to imitate them. But yeah, uh, that hasn't happened in, I don't know, 20, 30 years. So, um, well, but, you're not in college with 20-year-olds anymore. Oh, so. that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, college students is all about dominance and <laughs> doing your laundry not quite enough. Okay, that's right. Uh, 
turning your in, underwear inside out so that you have an extra day of underwear. Oh, yeah. Yeah. did you do that? I didn't do that. I knew guys in college that uh-huh. would. I, I, had, I knew guys in college who would wear it front and back and then flip it inside out uh-huh. and then wear it front and back so you could get four wears out of one pair of underwear. Pretty That's disgusting. That's how fabric works. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly Damn. how underwear works. How did but, they pass the SAT? I don't know how. I mean... I have a yeah. little table out here with, with some water. I hope you don't mind. Hey, no problem. Mm-hmm. You drink away there. Uh, so I'm going to call out the elephant in the room, as you can tell. Diane's hair is now red. Uh, she decided to go red instead of blonde. and uh, We thought it looked a little too fake, the blonde. The blonde so. was a little too much of a, well, kind of like a wig. And it was just too platinum. And she just wanted something more natural. And she looks still looks beautiful. She's smoking hot. Uh, as always, my wife's just always turns me on and gives me a boner. Uh, well, right, not right now because we're on Twitch. Yes, that wouldn't that would be, be appropriate. A little... a little creepy, a little gross. Not consensual. Not consensual with anybody. Well, I mean, do, do you have my consent to get a boner? Uh, not right now. Not right now. Okay, there you go. Uh, that's all it takes. So I'm not going to get an erection. So, but we just got back from Tahoe a couple days ago. We spent Mm -hmm. 10 days there and we went to several beaches and we actually, uh, we, three times we actually found places out in the wilderness to uh, do some type of sexual activity and it was quite amazing. Mm -hmm. And also we, uh, we took a day and we went up to Reno because uh, we were staying in Nevada, and we found an amazing adult boutique that was something like you can't find out oh, in here. Los no, no, not at all. Not at all. So uh, it was very large. Uh, they had basically it was two storefronts. One side had all lingerie and also some like kind of uh, seductive BDSM type of bondage outfits and the other and side. some toys. Yeah, and then there was a, a small area for sex toys. It wasn't large. I wouldn't really call it a sex shop. It was no, a true it was more boutique. adult boutique. But then there was also a whole side that was just all costumes for cosplay and fantasy and role play. It's called the Chocolate Walrus, and they were nice enough to let us go ahead and film inside of their location. And we put together a little video that we want to go ahead and show everybody. So we'll go ahead and show this. If you are listening to the podcast, I would suggest go to YouTube. You can go ahead and watch just the video on YouTube I will go ahead and start this video up for the Chocolate Walrus in Reno. If you're in downtown Reno and you want to take a break from gambling at casinos that would have been really posh in the 1970s and 80s, then head to the Chocolate Walrus. This hot and classy adult boutique has everything you need to fulfill all your sexual fantasies to include lingerie, costumes, bondage, role play, adult novelty items, sex toys, and one of my favorites, chocolate penises. The Chocolate Walrus opened in 2004 to sell erotic chocolates, but demand for more sexual items rose like Chet's penis when I get out of the shower. Their knowledgeable staff will help you explore your desires and needs for a steamy night at home with a partner like Chet and I, or by yourself like Wells. The prices for their items can't be beat, which is great for Chet because he's a huge cheapskate. I wanted to explore this erotic world and try on some sexy items for myself. I started with the spicy romper, which made me feel like a sexy Wario from Mario Brothers. Mmm, my breath smells like garlic. I always had a fantasy to be Poison Ivy and have a threesome with Harley Quinn and Batman, but this costume seemed to add too much foliage in the crotch. This seductive spacesuit really got Chet's motor going. It made me want to buzz my light ear, and by light ear, I mean my vagina. They also have lavished outfits for men. Chet looks like he's ready for a drug-induced orgy at Burning Man. I like this outfit, but Chet says the pants make his penis look too small. Chocolate Walrus is actually a cosplay hotspot for burners heading to the playa because Reno's the last major city before the desert destination. Chet's ready for the Reno Village People convention with this outfit. I feel like Jessica Rabbit in this shimmery short red dress, but it's too large, which is probably something I would say to Jason Momoa. I love this flappers-inspired miniskirt and jewel-encrusted bra. 
I might make Chet dress up as Chaplin and go down on me until that mustache is rubbed off. If you're single, then this fishnet dress will catch all the fish in the sea, but make sure to use a condom so you don't catch something else. This flare sleeve top and miniskirt makes me feel like a Vegas showgirl. Too bad I'm in Reno. The Chocolate Walrus also has a large selection of specialty hats. This tiny cowboy hat that Chet is wearing would look really cute on the tip of his penis. I had to try on their super cute evening wear. The lace trim can make this dress double as a sexy nighty. But I like the cut of this velour sun and moon dress because it makes my breasts look amazing. We ended up buying the sexy space cadet costume, the pink flappers mini skirt, some stockings, and the velour sun and moon dress. I could have walked out with a whole store, but like I said earlier, Chet's a cheapskate. Thank you, Chocolate Walrus. We'll definitely be back for more. All right. So do you have any questions there, Richard, about that? I want to know how much uh, it costs to dress up as the space uh, attendant. Like how much it costs, like for the outfit, or just to, yeah, to put it on? Yeah, how much did the outfits cost? Because you you took home three, right? So yeah, it, the the total for all well, the three uh, outfits in the uh, stockings, it was just about a hundred dollars. Hundred and five, I thought. Hundred and five bucks, which mm -hmm. is for three outfits. That's that's ridiculously cheap. So the cadet was forty. Yeah. So uh, there were some things, some pieces that were a little bit more expensive, like the the flared sleeve uh the, those two pieces there were that was about 120 bucks um there was a lot of renaissance stuff uh people can go there to go to rent fairs uh, to stock up on outfits and a lot of girdles like high-end like leather girdles their their sex toys were actually very high end as well. They are mm -hmm. high quality. I think they use Fun Factory and glass, yeah. like the G L A S, but the A has like a little umlaut or a little accento on top of it. And yeah, all their sex toys were were pretty expensive, but I mean they were super high quality. Like the vibrators were anywhere from like eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah, you it, wouldn't be able to go wrong there. No, you know, I mean, that's it. Seems like that's uh, that's the good high quality. Um, that they do have a website, but their website actually isn't updated as much, and so they will do discreet shipping to anywhere you want to uh, buy a, a product. So if you go to the website, they don't have nearly like they almost have none of their costumes and like their mm -hmm. whole side was just all costumes it was it it was amazing it was cool to look through them all i mean we we spent like two to three hours and we didn't even cover yeah they kind of were like okay you guys gotta go now we're yeah, gonna close soon. yeah we're, we're, well we went there on a sunday and they yeah. closed at six and so and we decided to like get there around like three or something like that but we just didn't have enough time to look through everything mm -mm. but um, you, you, I mean, I, I don't think you could go wrong with one of those sex toys. They were, they were really nice. Um, yeah. I, we would have bought one if we didn't have our drawers um, yeah, no. overflowing with sex toys right now. But, uh, what I was saying about the online portion is if you find anything, uh, on Instagram, that's go to their Instagram page. It's just at the chocolate walrus. And then if you see anything that they post on there that you like, you can go ahead and message them and, and then you can buy it and they will ship it to you because it's really not on the, the website at all. So, uh, also a lot of lingerie. I, we didn't even get time to get into the lingerie section. A lot of stuff was, was kind of scandalous, but it was also pretty, um, yeah, it was reasonable, but uh, I mean, we didn't want to try it on just because we're on Twitch and also YouTube, and we didn't want to get kicked off for having uh, Diane try on some really sexy stuff. I I would have loved it, but it's like that's too much. It's for, a little too much for for, for this type of medium, but you mm -hmm. know, we'll we'll uh, get an OnlyFans page going for her, and she'll go ahead and go back there and try that. I'm stuff just on. stuck on the fact that Renfair people shop there because. That just like reorients the way I think about Renaissance festivals. Like 
it, are they just fronts for are they just like a middle medieval sex festival is that what a ren fair really no, is well, it's like ren i mean there's i don't know they could have sex there i've never heard of like uh, a big romp fest at, at ren fairs but songs. they just have costumes there if you want i mean they, you could do right. anything for for halloween and what on a ren fair let's head to the sex shop and buy yeah. our costumes I but mean, i mean i wouldn't even call it a sex shop it was just like an adult boutique and there was there's about far more costumes than anything like, it was, I would say about an eighth of the store was uh, was actually sex toys, and then uh, there and then, was another eighth of the store that was like the kind of bachelorette party novelty items, and then half the store was costumes, and the rest of the store was all lingerie. So it was I, I was really impressed, mm -hmm. and just the fact that we got out of there with four pieces for 105 bucks, it just seems like that's just unheard of in in Los Angeles. Uh, as you can see, Diane looks amazing. And I really like that little pink uh, flapper mini skirt that she was wearing. I, I mean, we, we had sex right away when we got back with that thing and it was, it was pretty, pretty damn hot. Uh, what, what were your opinions on the whole thing there, Diane? On what the I just saw the whole experience? Oh, just the same as yours, pretty much. It was an amazing store and mm -hmm. friendly staff, and you really can't go wrong going there. And that was the thing about the staff was that they actually had like training programs so that they would be very knowledgeable about the pieces and really kind of exploring your your sexuality and what your kinks are and what you're into and what your fantasies are and they would help you out develop that even if you came mm -hmm. and you didn't know what it was they would kind of like help you find the right outfit and the right pieces that made you feel really good about yourself yeah just really to, just discover who, like what you like and who you are and uh they all um uh, they take all the owner or sorry the workers there they take these trainings to to try and actually uh that helps with with uh, pairing people with the right stuff and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, Richard, uh, did you like those outfits that I had on, or did would you buy anything like that? Uh, there was one you had with really wild pants, like really, really busy pants. Like I, It went by pretty quickly. I couldn't remember what the pattern was, but I was like, that? You know, um, you might want to just come down with me sometime to WeHo in something like that. And we'll just see if people show up because I'm what, right? I'm, I'm down. Here. I mean, like I didn't buy those pants. I, I they, I, I should have gone a size up. They really were constricting on my no, penis. They, no, no, it was fine. No, it was fine because it felt like it was just smashed. And I was like, where did my, where did my penis go? I thought uh, it was fine as well. Yeah, I liked the fur thing and stuff. It was just, it was super hot in there. Um, that, that furry thing, it just was super warm. They were saying that, uh, a lot of people that go to Burning Man buy that. Yeah. Because of the playa gets so cold at night. So because it gets super hot in the day and then like almost freezing at night cause it's in the middle of the desert. So, but what would you wear there, Dick? Well, I mean, I, I have to see cause you, the camera went by pretty quickly and you showed off a lot of women's clothing, which. I'm a progressive guy, but I don't think that that's my particular style. So, you know, uh, I did like the the wild hat with the goggles. I think I could make that work. Then did I did I not see a picture of a hat with goggles in there? Yeah, there was a lot of steampunk, steampunk hats. hats steampunk yeah. hats, yeah. Yeah. Steampunk. yeah, there was a huge amount of steampunk. That's just because that's what people usually wear when they're in the playa there. Uh, they the kind of more steampunky kind of artsy stuff and that pattern on those tights i i i don't even it was just it reminded me of the 80s it reminded yeah. me of like that aha video of take on me yeah. it just kind of reminded me of that just I, I felt like it would start all moving and i would just get sucked into the pants and then i would be chased by some guys with some wrenches and stuff and some hard hats but you know, that's that's just the adventure that uh, we are going. Be very popular out here. I'm figuring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. The uh, that mesh shirt it was it was really well made for uh, for construction, but I, I just felt it was a little too short, and my my love handles popped out. I, I'm not the the super chiseled man that I used to be. I have to work out a little bit more. It's been you know uh, it's been a, a hard 
Co- uh, oh, he had that hernia surgery. He had a hernia surgery. That sent him back a little bit. me back, and then the whole quarantine thing, it just kind of made me a little chubby, but we'll get back to it, and I'll be nice and ripped again, and then it'll look good on me, but... Uh, it looks fine. Yeah. You we'll talk- what I do and not eat anything that you enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy. Unfortunately. Lose love handles. Yeah. Or, or drink any alcohol. Cheers, everybody, to whiskey. Uh, ginger ale. Ginger ale. Uh, do we have any callers? We, we, sorry, we will go back to Tahoe. We have some other things that we wanted to chat about, but do you have any um, any callers yes, coming in there, Yes, we have Dick? Uh, one person. We have Richard, who has a question about vasectomies. Oh, okay. we let him in. Cool. Hello, you're talking sex live with Chet and Diane. I am Chet. And I am Diane. And is this uh, Richard? And do you have a question about visectomies? Hey there. Yeah, this is Richard. Uh, Richard Severs. Uh, oh, okay. And, and I believe it's I believe it's called uh, vasectomies, not oh, visectomies. Oh, were we saying visectomies? Uh, oh, it is. There is an A in there. It's vasectomy. Yeah, because it severs the vas deferens, which is. But it also two. severs your vices. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is that what it does? It severs the vas deferens. That's uh, okay. I'm writing that down. The vas deferens. Uh, see, yeah. That's, that's why I'm calling. Uh, uh, I need. How do you do a vasectomy? Well, you go to a doctor. Yes, yeah. you would go that to perform surgery. Surgery. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. I, I, I know that. I know that. I know that's what you need to do to to get one done. You go see a doctor. See, I mm-hmm. need to know how yeah. how do you functionally do perform a vasectomy? Okay. See, I'm going to be performing vasectomies now. Oh, oh well, I, I wouldn't know the answer to that. Are, are you your? Own, are you a doctor, or are you just uh, try to go into business for yourself? Are you oh, trying to golly, do this on yourself? No, no, not a doctor. I'm a, I'm, no, I'm a, I'm a former, former woodworker from from uh, the UP, Michigan. But uh, you see, I moved on down to Florida. I'm a snowbird. One okay. of them, you know, the snowbirds yeah, yeah. that come down for the nice weather. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, in Florida, they got a shortage of the teachers and the uh, healthcare workers. They got shortages of uh, lots of things. Yeah, uh, and, and they're you probably know, for gonna. The teachers, they just started saying, "All you need to do is be a veteran or a spouse of a veteran, and you just gotta watch a teacher, and you can become a teacher yourself." Hey, you know what? They're doing the same thing for doctors now. So <laughs> they got a whole what? bunch of guys here that just want their 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 dick clipped, and uh, <laughs> no, I figured I could I could uh, offer my services. So <laughs> there's, uh, there's so many big, things big wrong with that the show. statement. Okay, good, good. I'm glad you're watching. So you yeah, don't get your I, dick snipped. I, I thought maybe uh, maybe I could get learn a lesson from uh, from Chet and Diana how to perform that vasectomy. Okay. Uh, okay. We're yeah, not doctors. Yeah, yeah we're definitely uh, unlicensed here. We're just a couple who's had a whole lot of sex that just likes to share our knowledge with people and help people out. But um, I, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know what's going on in Florida right now, but I'm pretty sure you still need to have a, a medical license to perform some type of surgery or you could get into some serious uh, trouble with uh with the law also people could should could sue you and you could get in a lot of i mean yeah you could get in a lot of trouble that's a lot of trouble trying to say. Just, oh, well, say you should tell that to the feller at the dmv that, that gave me my certificate oh oh so all right so you have your own certificate now i understand yeah um, yeah you just go to the you just go to department of motor vehicles and now they just kind of handle everything there wow. you just there's hmm. a form you just got to put in your name and date of birth and they just and you say, what do you want to do? And it's just a blank. There's just a line. Wow. You put in teacher, or doctor, you know, a sanitation worker, whatever you want to do. And then they write you up a certificate right there. Say, you're good to go. Wow. You Florida know, just they, is... they recommend, like, go get a go get an education. Go yeah, go, uh, go talk to somebody who does it. Oh, but, okay. Uh, so you're thinking yeah. that we done it before. Deregulation uh, does wonders for efficiency. Yeah, yeah. Go um, straight to doctor. <laughs> just so I would say, um, like, go, go to ac- medical go, school. We go to medical school. And I, I mean, so you really, you're 
what what they're doing is they're putting now I think it is just uh, I don't know are there cameras that go into the scrotum that actually and then they just uh, they kind of cut the vas deferens and then they like solder it off or they tie it off or something solder right? it off oh solder I don't know. I know. Like, like, they, right. they heat it <laughs> they put heat to it and it, and it, it, it is, fuses it's an outpatient it shut, procedure okay? you're yeah. in and out. Yeah, I mean, it takes it takes less than a day. Um, they might just give some local anesthetic. You might not even go under, and uh, you put your legs up and some stirrups with some uh, with a curtain over the the operating area, and they go in and they cut it. It it and it takes uh you're, you're out you don't even spend the night and you go home and you just kind of ice your genitals for uh i think a week or a few days and then uh you're you're sterile uh mm. you you're you still produce semen but it, they're basically shooting blanks there's no sperm in it like the the liquidy fluid that comes out in your semen is produced by the prostate uh, our good friend Prostate Pete, who was on a few shows ago, told us all about that. And so, but it, it that that liquid actually uh, carries the sperm. And so now there's no sperm going with the liquid. It's just the liquid that comes out. And so uh, they, the they liquid do liquid that comes out. This is yeah. all gold. You keep, yeah. keep going. <laughs> so they cut the vas deferens. The vas deferens is the tube that goes from your testicles or your testes to your uh, urethra there and uh, that's what makes your sperm come out uh, you know why they call okay. it the vas deferens what's that because there's a big difference between a penis and a vagina and it's it's a vast deference uh, right uh, vast oh, I get what, uh, <laughs> deference i i'm i'm hyped to that wordplay there yeah yeah uh I just wondered, how do you know where the vast difference is? Can you feel them? Uh, hey, Diane, could you could you grab Chet's Chet's balls there and see if he could could tell me where the vast difference is? I wouldn't know where to begin. So, though. so typically, uh, your, in, your in the in the scrotum area. Yeah, your left testicle. If you feel your testicles, your left testicle is larger than your right, and your that has the vast difference on it. It's actually kind of connected. It wraps up around and it goes inside your body. It goes like kind of inside and then it comes back out to the urethra there. So if you, you can feel it, it's a tube. Uh, if you, you know, if after you had a hot shower, it's a really hot day, you can, you know, pull down your pants and put your leg up on like a stool or a chair and let your, your scrotum hang down. And then usually mm -hmm. <laughs> Diane see this when my, my testicles hang down and they feel like they're six inches from away from my body. Oh, you when can, it's super hot. Oh yeah. When it's oh, super yeah. hot and you can just grab your, your testicles and feel around in there and you can feel that tube that comes off of the left, uh, testy there. And that, that I'm, I mean, I'm no medical professional don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that's your vast deference. And Okay. I wouldn't go okay. in and try to cut that. I would not recommend trying to do that. Uh, it, I, I heard. Oh that. yeah, I'm not going to do it on myself. I'm not crazy. I'm not. I'm not stupid here, <laughs> right? I'm. I'm just okay. trying to figure out the right proper way to do it. So what you're saying is it needs heat. You know, people when it's real hot out, you get sweaty and your balls hang down. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. You know what I think I'm going to do is uh, outside the clinic. I'll just have the boys who come in to get their to 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 get their. Uh, to get their their dicks bricked, uh, I'll uh, I'll do some I'll do a pickup basketball game. Get them all played like five okay. on five, and uh -huh. then they just uh, they come through the ringer. You know, I'll get the acetylene torch out, <laughs> oh, do no, no, some no, soldering, no. and uh, and Bob's your uncle. There you go. There's some ice. Go home and uh, ice your balls. Yeah, oh. I, I don't know about that. Um, we don't recommend that. No, I, I'm pretty sure that. I'm not too certain. I haven't had one. I have heard of friends who have, like, how they, they I, I don't know if they just clean cut it or, they, I mean, I feel like they have to, like, solder it, but I know it is reversible. They can reattach it so that they will, it will produce sperm again, but it isn't 100% for sure that they can go ahead and reverse the process. So, uh, well, I'm sure if it's a tube, they make PVC pipe in that gauge. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty small tube. I don't know. It's probably like uh, like three or four millimeters in diameter. Medical the, the grade. Inner diameter. Yeah, five, yeah, so yeah, very medical. small. It can make like it a, tiny. I think at that point it's called a stint. 
Uh, but so there is a procedure in India, and we've talked about this on the show before, where what they do in India is they actually they inject the vast deference with a plastic, and the plastic coats the inside. It's like an epoxy. It coats the inside of the vas deferens. And what happens then when the sperm goes through, it, the, the static electricity of the uh, plastic actually rips apart the sperm. So you, it still is connected. Everything's there, but you're just shooting blanks. Also, they found in India that you can it helps with stds they found that when the hiv virus goes through that epoxy coated vas deferens that it rips that virus apart and other viruses and bacteria that were, are transmitted sexually so it's it's a huge effective way to prevent pregnancy and to prevent stis but that single little bottle of epoxy only costs like 17 cents and so what I heard is that, you know, the drug industry or big pharma, they can't make any money off of it. So they're not going to actually do this here in the U.S., which is a huge shame because it could be just revolutionary. Because the way that you reverse this is you then put a syringe into your scrotum, into the vas, sec, vas deferens and, of saline, and you just flush it out. And then you are ready to go again. You're ready to have kids. And it's like a super easy process other mm -hmm. than doing a vasectomy reversal. So I don't know. I, if, if I were you, I would go to India. It sounds that what this is just all too much. Uh, being a former woodworker, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> now I got to yeah. work on wood, and all I've got to do is bring over my torch and uh, no, no clippers. And it I, sounds like uh, I can do the Indian way there, and uh, just just put some caulk in the cock. Exactly, put some <laughs> cock in there, but it's a little bit of different type of cock. It's epoxy. I mean, I guess some cock is C A U L K cock is a type of epoxy. But I, I don't know, maybe you can Dr. Strange it, you know, you can go to India, you can find some type of uh, guru that will actually teach you how to do this. And you can be the only person in the U.S. that actually does the epoxy coating of the vas deferens so that you can go ahead and, and people can have this treatment here. I mean, if you're already going to do it illegal, of course, this is all not our recommendation. Not at all. Not at all. So Chet just has to say like, that right now. Instead of an epoxy, because having an epoxy injected into your, you know, the tubes of your penis just seems mm -hmm. a little bit extreme to me. But if you could like have Teflon uh shot in there can you get people pregnant faster what do you mean teflon like it goes faster like it yeah. shoots through oh, yeah. it shoots such a right faster it's quicker yeah yeah non-stick surface right in there just <laughs> yeah, yeah. right through just shoot yeah. it right away it launch her right off of you yeah I, I i think the whole the static electricity i, I don't know I, I i don't know what the i i did take some plastic classes in college you were and... describing that the static electricity ripping the sperm apart i was thinking of that scene where dr manhattan gets created in watchman where he goes into the t into the chamber and he mm -hmm. just rips apart a billion pieces do you know what i'm talking about oh yeah, yeah, yeah i love yeah. that movie and the oh TV yeah show i'm a HBO big watchman great. fan oh yeah. boy so you're saying that there's probably a whole bunch of indian sperm just living on mars right now yeah uh, yeah I don't realizing know. that yeah. the rest of us don't actually have any purpose well, I mean, if if you were to watch the HBO show, I think Dr. Manhattan, he went to uh, Io, uh, the m moon on Jupiter there. Or no, that was that was somebody else. But I won't ruin it. Um, anyway, so we have a comment that says that put on a lab coat and then sit on my hand till it falls asleep and go to town. I called the Dr. Stranger. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So basically... Uh, Crocs of Steel wants to jerk everybody off to become, uh, to become, uh, sterile, I guess. I guess, yeah, maybe that would work. Oh, jerk you off. Hey, that's, that's a method. I, I already <laughs> thought about doing that. Just, yeah. uh, just, 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 yeah, using these, these very strong wrists of mine and just jerking guys off so much that they just can't handle it anymore. And maybe they mm -hmm. just st stop producing sperm. 
Well, that's another thing was that there, uh, since uh, Florida probably will make abortion illegal, and so there will be a rise in vasect vasectomies, sorry, not vasectomies, vasectomies, and, you know, maybe there will be something like this. I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. not saying if you have a, if you don't have a license to go out and give people vasectomies, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, and then Crocus Steel just said, yeah, I want to drain all the dudes on the planet. Well, good for you. That is something to aspire to. Uh, so Richard, our caller, Richard, um, I think, I think we pointed you in the right direction. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. You really, you really gave me all the information I need. Now I know exactly what a vasectomy is. Oh, uh, you didn't even know what it was Generally, how to do on. it. Uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna send you guys, uh, I'll, I'll put it in the comment thread there. Uh, mm -hmm. once I'm ready to open, you guys come to the grand opening of Richard Sever's vasectomy as mm. seen on Chet and Diane. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. All right. Well, I guess we are, uh, your first advertising agent there. We so don't endorse it though. We do not endorse it. We just Go advertise to a medical it. professional. Uh, but you know, maybe look into the India thing. That seems like a fun mm -hmm. idea. So... But again, not giving our uh, recommendation to do that because we don't want anybody to get hurt out there. So, but Richard, thank you so much for calling in. That was a lot of fun, and I hope we pointed no, you in the No, thank you right so direction. much. This was a dream come true. Oh, great. Well, have a good night, my friend. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, hey, Dick, have you ever thought about having a vasectomy? I mean, I don't know. It seems like for the gay community, it's not even an like, issue. It's not an issue at all. There's no reason to do it. So, uh, no, I, I haven't. Like, generally, I try to have as few surgeries as possible. And since mm -hmm. getting people pregnant doesn't really work that way for me, mm -hmm. um, I'm okay. Uh, and and it's uh, yeah, it's weird. It's weird because when you watch like 80s rom-coms and stuff, there's always a scene where a guy gets hit in the balls mm -hmm. and it's always very, very uncomfortable for every single guy ever. Mm -hmm. So just the thought of a vasectomy, I think that a man who wants to get one is, you know, it's fine, but like they have to get past like this mental hurdle of ten, an entire decade of watching movies about getting hit in the balls to <laughs> yeah. even yeah. contemplate really doing it. The ice on the balls for a week and uh, yeah, you talk around. about you have to ice your testicles. I was I've not heard of that. Is that what you use a loving cup for? Like what the heck? I, I don't know what a loving cup is. What is that? Oh, it's, like a cup? it's one of those two handled cups, like you know, like like they give out of trophies. Okay, okay, and yeah, then you just put your balls. Cup. Oh, that's that's it. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, that I did not know that's what the trophy cups were called there, mm. but. I had a coworker who he uh, got in a motorcycle accident and he really racked his nuts hard where I think oh. he had to have one removed. And so he, he was out of work for like a month. And then when he came back, he was just waddling around with like ice on his nuts. And so I would picture something like that if I was to get a vasectomy. But uh, if, let's say th this drug it's not even a drug it's just the indian epoxy injection if that was to come to the u.s and it could help with preventing stis do you think you would try to get that that would be interesting although i think uh the description of indian epoxy for, for is, your is a turn off there yeah, yeah, yeah. it's not <laughs> gonna do it like, for you there. we're gonna have to work on the marketing <laughs> got it, got it. <laughs> of it just a little bit just Indian epoxy. Non-FDA uh, approved Indian epoxy. Are you sure, Richard? It doesn't sound too appealing. Just shoot that right into your vast deference and uh, you'll go ahead uh, and yes. shoot blanks. So uh, I, 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 there's, a, there's a stigma with men for getting a, a vasectomy because if they are going to be with a partner that wants children in the future, they fear that the partner will not want to marry them or be with them because 
of the the vasectomy. So like I feel that's a real issue for women. Yeah. I think that would be a big turnoff for a lot of women. Cuz some women, you know, they get in relationships cuz they want children, but they if they find out that Or they don't want children and they get in a relationship and then they want children. Yeah. So. And they just want their options open. Mm-hmm. So if they find that the man might be sterile, they might not want to pursue him. So I'm seeing Crocs of Steel apparently in our chat mm-hmm. uh, actually went to uh, was going to get one and had to be mm-hmm. interviewed by their primary care physician to to be able to go forward with it so i think that makes that makes sense like there, there's a thing you have to you have to really make a decision it's it's almost like being uh getting gender reassignment surgery and where you go through a lot of psychological evaluations before you do it i don't know if it's that uh, intense, but it's like, hey, do, do you really want to do this? But I, I guess with that saying that it's not, uh, it seems like if they were doing that, then it wouldn't be as reversible as some people claim it would be. So, it, yeah, so mm-hmm. that's that's quite a bit of stuff there, Crocs of Steel, that you had to go through. And, and it looks like you didn't do it. It was actually scared away. Uh, he watched some videos on Pornhub and his mind was changed. So mm. wow, that's uh, yeah. I think that would change anybody's mind mm-hmm, there. Mm-hmm. So um, we're gonna get back to talking about our trip to Tahoe. I know it's not probably everyone's favorite Tahoe. There's there's some fun stuff that we wanted to chat about. So uh, there was a few spots that we went to where we got it on and it, we don't recommend this we no. don't actually want people to um to go out and get in trouble for this you have to be very very uh uh careful when you're going to have sex in the wilderness but there is some things that you can do such as going to a place where uh you're not going to be seen by anyone and so what Diane and I do when we're hiking, we'll go off trail and we'll go off trail quite a bit until we're to a spot where like we can't see anybody or hear anybody. And then we go ahead and uh, we have a little blanket that we have and like, oh, it's like, it looks like a, a little knapsack that you unzip and then it's a blanket. And then you just go ahead and lay on it and you bring all your, your fun sex uh devices or toys that you want to involve condoms if you need it or lube and then you just kind of make a romantic time out of it it is difficult for people to actually orgasm when they are in public or when they are in nature because of the whole fear of having someone actually finding them or the whole risk of it but some people actually get off on it where they uh, are more turned on by the risk or the 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 danger of uh, actually having sex in a, a area where anybody could see uh crocs of steel says i myself have not had outdoor sex are there any performance issues due to change in weather i find it harder to perform when you are cold uh we can go ahead and answer this um and then we'll get to some pictures that we have and we'll continue to discuss what we're t- talking about here. Uh, some people actually find it it's a, a kink or a fetish to actually get off when they're cold. Uh, I enjoy being cold. Diane does not no, enjoy being cold. Some not people at all. like uh, dildos or sex toys that are actually freezing, it's an erotic sensation, I guess. It's more of yourself. Uh, it's all individualized. It is yeah. individualized on what you enjoy. Uh, some people enjoy hot. Some people enjoy cold. There was a study that was done between the two different temperature factions, and uh, they found that the large majority actually get turned on and are uh, easier to orgasm when it is cold as opposed to when it's hot. Uh, I don't think, know why. I that think is. if uh, your performance changes when the weather changes, you can you can use that to tell people when it's going to rain. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like your knees are hurting. Uh, there is some study. I mean, just look at statistics. Um, people tend to have more sex in the winter months because it is darker and there's less things to do inside. Uh, You're stuck inside and so you tend to have more sex because you're in bed together 
and you're trying to get each other's warmth and you're snuggling and you get aroused. Um, but let's see here. So if we are being honest, I find it arousing to see my penis shrink when it's cold. The smaller it gets, the hotter. Well, that is an interesting kink. Um, I don't want to say that it's uh, different or weird. It's just... Um, I find the ladies really enjoy a small penis. Well, hmm. to each his own, my friend. And that is a good segue from us talking about having sex in the wilderness to Diane and I, we went to a nude beach or a clothing optional beach. and It's we, been a while since we've been to it's one. It's been a while. And so... We've got some pictures. They're not. Uh, we're. They're not exactly. You can't see any nude people. We didn't take too many because of that. But so there it is. Optional beach. Uh, optional beach ahead. Optional clothing beach ahead. If you were to actually zoom in on this picture, you could see some people down there, and uh, I, I, there's somebody there, and there's somebody there. But you can't is, see anything. But you can't too see far anything. Away. And this really is Twitch, too, so we can't do that. We can't show it. I mean, mm -hmm. you, maybe there's nobody there. Uh, who knows? But um, Not that we'd post. No, it. we were definitely not post. So there's us on the nude beach. Uh, we just, we, I, we, our skin is very sensitive. And so <laughs> we, had a tent. we had a tent so that we could get the sun off of us. Uh, I have a lot of moles and Diane's skin is very fair. And so um, we, we decided to go with a little tent that we would shield ourselves from the sun. But uh, it was something different actually getting up and walking around on a nude beach. Uh, so this was our view. And then we found this little boat here. It was kind of a creeper boat. I don't know what, I'm sure he had some binoculars, but this was the view. It wasn't super close, but this is a little cove. It was called, what was the name of this beach? It was like, the uh, Creek beach. it was Creek Beach. Creek Beach. Creek Beach. And so it was just like in an area where if you were to go out in the water here, you could see other people uh, not naked, and then you were naked. I, uh, Diane and I went out in the water naked, and you know it's it's it is a it is a freeing feeling to have uh, be out in the water, and then have your your penis float, and then just have other people be around. There wasn't uh, too too many people. No, in the it wasn't water. wasn't really yeah, a lot there of people. There was another were woman and another man. Yeah, and. There, if you're a man, and uh, sorry, this is the picture of the boat uh, close up. I, I'm trying to see if the guy actually had binoculars. I was trying to figure that out. But so it, we were trying to figure out if um, it, sorry, let me retract that. So um, as a man, when you are out on a nude beach, it, you like you, you have the sense of like, well, do I got to. I mean, am I, am I large enough is my penis size and it's it's really there's all body types and it's and it's not something to be ash like ashamed, ashamed of. of exactly mm -hmm. you really just got to be proud of yourself um there's all different types of people there bodies young old, old yeah skinny fat yeah there fit, was not fit a really muscular chiseled guy who was right next to us and he was with a girl that was very free and who's a little bit bigger than mm -hmm. he was and that was that I, I don't know if they were a couple I assume they were because yeah, they were rubbing sure. uh lotion uh sunscreen uh all over each other and um but when you're out there you you feel self-conscious at first and, and I feel like it, there's there's a different uh, mindset for men and women so what did you feel when you were out there i feel like for women it's more like oh, are the guys gonna objectify me mm -hmm. or get turned on or am i gonna get any creepers mm -hmm. but I, I i feel like a lot of guys there were actually they were gay oh the um, majority i felt that too the yeah. one guy that we were sitting next to in front of us mm -hmm. and then also uh, for a man, like I was saying, the whole like, oh, is my is my penis size adequate? Mm -hmm. Am I going to be judged by this? Because for for a woman, you know, your your vagina is if you walk and you can you can hide it so that it's closed, but then your breasts are out. And, and there were some women who just had a or topless, just and topless. then they had just their bikini bottoms bottoms on. on yeah. 
But so I was like, you know what, whatever, we're just going to walk around and get in the water. And, you know, it was, was it's very it was, freeing. It was very freeing. Mm-hmm. I, I felt good. Uh, it's really the nudist thing is all about all bodies are good bodies. And... Yeah. And I feel that uh, people have a negative uh, perception of nudity because we get our knowledge about this from porn. So it, it's not sexual at all. It was almost like seeing just a painting, like a Renaissance painting of naked people. You don't, I, I, I don't get turned on by those types of paintings. It's just, it's a natural body. It just seems like it's, it's a piece of artwork. It that, is. Yeah, you're Each looking person's at person's a piece of art. Mm-hmm. And it's just everyone's beautiful in their own way. We did have um, on the other beach, these two girls got naked and were like 10 feet from us yeah it but, seemed like that was an only fans account yeah because they were like rubbing each other's boobs mm-hmm. against each other i'm like this is for only fans yeah isn't it? and they weren't on the actual nude beach they were on uh the beach that was just north of it and so it um it they were rubbing their boobs together and uh they were very attractive and but it was like there was kids running around just probably 50 feet from them. Yeah, so I was we like, were this like, isn't a okay. uncomfortable This there. is not okay at all. So, but, uh, see, Crocs of Steel says the guy on the boat may not have binoculars, but he may have had the fish finder on, so he may have been able to pick up the outline of your penis on his fish finder. That had to be a really good <laughs> fish finder there. <laughs> Quite the accurate. I gotta, I gotta think those are those are more designed for finding fish because there's a yeah. lot of things in the sea that yeah. that you could pick up, right? There's just a lot of stuff underwater, mm-hmm. and yeah. uh, they want to see the fish itself. Yeah, and if he did, he, uh, he also says if he did, that's got to make me feel good. Yeah, I, I mean, if he did pick up my penis, <laughs> yeah, it was. But I was, yeah, but that boat was probably, I don't know. 100 feet out i don't know 200 feet out but um so i i mean anything else you want to discuss about the nude beach there the clothing optional beach it it is in nevada if and i don't know what the laws were around it i was a little concerned if it was like some type of if there was any type of law that would you know prohibit us from getting arrested for uh exposure but uh, i mean we didn't get it on we were making out in the water and i'm sure there was there was a lot of old people there and they probably enjoyed that and but we didn't like we're we didn't not gonna anything. have sex on yeah, the nude beach that's just grab. inappropriate exactly behavior it's a nude beach not a lewd safe beach. Consensual exactly one. so but w- when we actually did make love we found some spots where we uh could secluded secluded, and nobody was around and we made sure of that beforehand Mm -hmm. just to be safe yeah so we we did find a spot i let's see what's the we had a a view from where we were at there um so this there you can see there's a little uh actual uh bird's nest here that was where we were at and this was the view from the other side. So this was a spot where uh, nobody could see us. We couldn't see anybody. And we just got off the trail enough. So we just put down a blanket and had some fun. But uh, We were between a few rocks too. Yeah, so it was yeah. pretty secluded and covered. Yeah, so not this area. But there was another area where, yeah, Diane was here. So... This little cove here was just south. This is a a whale beach. And so there's this little area where there's some rocks where this little chipmunk was. And he was like, oh, no, you're defiling my home. And so there's all these rocks that you could get between and nobody actually sees you. So, uh, yeah, I highly... um, yeah, if you feel comfortable doing it, if you want to take that risk, uh, then be safe about it. Don't get arrested. Uh, just Make be sure just, nobody's around. Nobody's around. Mm-hmm. You're not going to explain I think don't get arrested is good advice no matter yeah. what activity you're performing. Exactly. Just, exactly. Um, if you're not at a nude beach, go get arrested. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think we want to give out that message. 
No. I I was just still kind of like bamboozled about like how the whole laws were for that one beach. I, I've 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 heard of nude beaches, but not so much in the U.S. I've heard of like nudist colonies or nudist resorts and stuff where that was the kind of it was okay, but not like it's as weird as a public place. We were swimming in the water, and then there were some teenagers that walked onto the beach and then walked through and then walked up on some other. And it was like, this is not okay. Not okay <laughs> by any means. So, Oops. and cheers, Diane. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that was a little interesting. They just wanted to walk through, and they were probably like, I don't know, 15, 16 years old. And it's they like, probably oh. were older Austin, than that. Austin, Texas has a new swimming hole called Hippie Hollow. Yeah. Yeah. And, we went to another hot springs in Santa Barbara, and people were nude there. And it's like they, they had were, like six or seven hot springs, and then at the top of the hot springs there was the bunch nudists. of nude people. Yeah, and there was no signs, and there no, were nothing just, at yeah, all. It, kids could just walk up, and it's just mostly like, men though. Yeah, there's like the majority of nudists yeah. I find are mostly men, and then a few women. Yeah, the ratio is very small in yeah. comparison. So, but we uh, we covered quite a bit today. Yeah, there's a lot of nude stuff, a lot of Tahoe and Reno, and uh, we want to thank our caller Richard and also Dick Colby, our producer. Also, thank you Crocs of Steel for chiming in with some input. Uh, we always value people's messages. And if you are listening to podcast, give us a like or a review. If you're on YouTube, give us a follow or a like. And also, if you're on Twitch, go ahead and follow us as well. We're going to go ahead and end the show. Thank you so much, everybody. Always remember to be safe, sane, and consensual. And have a good night. Good night. Be sex positive out there. Mm-hmm.